when I make the answer key up for the very last Algebra 2 trig regions, I drink Dunkin' Donuts coffee at almost 10 o'clock at night. Going to keep me up all night? Yes, I can't wait. Here we go, kids. We're still on part one, Mr. Key. Uh, Mr. Key, this is part one. Problems 15 through 27. Yay! Let's get going, kids. Let's see how you did. Wrong page. Page six. Let's eh, page five. I don't know what I thought I was on. I think I was trying to rush this. All right. So this one is asking about which one is not a function. Now, I since this is not going to be a teaching video, I am going to simply show you what these would look like if you graphed them on your calculator. This is a absolute value function. It looks like a V. Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes. So if you graph this, all it's got to do on the graphing calculator is pass the vertical line test. Yes, this one passes. This is an exponential function. It might look like this. It may look like this. It's going to look like this one. But it does pass the vertical line test. This is a parabola. If I move this over, this is actually going to be an upside down parabola. Passes the vertical line test. This, however, is something you can't really graph very easily on your graphing calculator. But the other ones you could have, and that's why you should have known choice four was the answer. All right, moving on. Oh, my God, this looks like so much fun. One minus sine squared. I always told my kids you can replace one with sine squared x plus cosine squared x. It's that one trig identity you just should know. So if that's true, then this is sine squared x plus cosine squared, what the heck is that? Plus cosine squared x minus sine squared x all over cosine squared x. Well, these are going to cancel. The sine squared and the minus sine squared cancel. So you end up with cosine squared over cosine squared, which is just 1. Moving on, children. Again, it's going to be a quick one because it is not a teaching video. This is just teaching. I'm just going through the solutions, kids. See how you did. Which equation it, re, relation is 1 to 1? Well, 1 to 1 means it passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. So x equals 3 is a vertical line straight up and down. Doesn't even pass the vertical line test, not even a function. This is a parabola that looks like this. It passes the vertical line test but fails the horizontal line test. Number 4 is an absolute value function, looks like a v, fails the horizontal line test. This is your right answer. If you graph the log of x, you should know it's going to look like this. And it passes both the vertical and the horizontal line test. Choice three. Perfect. Doing good so far, kids. All right, here we go. I love me some logarithms. I hate when people talk like that, by the way. Every time I see a log A, I'm going to replace it with X. Every time I see a log B, I'm going to replace it with Y. Why? Because that's what they ask you to do. So... First things first here, kids. we got to split this sucker up. Now, the only thing that's got the 2 is the B. They tried to trick you with those damn parentheses, but it's not. They don't even need that parentheses. This is the same as log A times B squared. They tried to trick you. So the first thing we're going to do is split this up. Split it up. So it becomes log of A plus log of b squared. But if you remember correctly, exponents come out front. So what is log a? Log a is x. So this is x plus this 2 comes out front, 2. And what's log b? y. So x plus 2y. Cutching. Choice 3. 18. All right. Four members of a, oh, I got to pause. All right, so for a member of a certain species of bird, the probability of surviving to adulthood is four sevens. That's the problem. So the probability of not surviving is three sevens. In a nest of five eggs, what is the probability to the nearest hundredth at least four eggs 
will survive. Wow, this is a part one question. So this is a, let me get over here. Oh man, I don't have a lot of room. All right, I'm gonna try to, oh, crap. I'm gonna try to do this kind of small. NRPQ, N is five. What I want to happen is at least four. So R is going to be four or five. So this is gonna be two equations. P, now what is the probability at least four eggs will survive and the probability of surviving is four sevenths. So P is four sevenths and Q is three sevenths. So I set up my equations, five choose four. 4 7 to the 4, 3 7 to the 1. 5 choose 5, 4 7 to the 5, 3 7 to the 1, uh, 0. All right, so now that's the stuff I got to type in. So let me get my calculator out. Clear history. So we're going to do uh, menu, I haven't done this in a while, 5, 3, 5, comma, 4, parenthesis, 4 divided by 7, parenthesis, raised to the 4th, out of that, parenthesis, 3 divided by 7, parenthesis, raised to the 1, enter. Wow. We're going to do the same thing, except now we're going to do this to the 0, this to the five, and this over here, five. And then we're gonna take this, enter, and we're gonna add this. Now I gotta make, I gotta put at least one decimal in there, was gonna give me a dumb fraction. Decimal, enter. 0.289, so I'm guessing it's choice two, yep. Choice two, there it is. All right, moving on, kids, moving on. Let's see what we got. In a triangle, angle X is seven, X, and then how many distinct triangles can be formed? So the famous how many distinct triangle questions. So this is definitely probably, definitely probably the law of signs, maybe not, let's see. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. X is 71, X is six. Z is 2. So we got to find this right here. So remember, it's the law of sine. So we're going to do 2 over the sine of Z. I just forgot the Z. Let's see who's bugging me now. Oh, it's our superintendent. He's not bugging me. Although it is kind of late to be texting. Z, 2 over the sine of Z is equal to 6 over the sine of 71. So I get six times sine z, let me pick a different color for you. Six, we're gonna cross multiply, times sine of z is equal to two times the sine of 71. Then we gotta divide by six, divide by six. So I come over to my calculator and I'm gonna do control division, two times the sine of 71 over six, enter, 315. And then, so then I get, so I get the sine of z is equal to 0.315, but I gotta do inverse sine of that to figure out it is. So I do sine inverse of that thing. And that tells me my angle is 18. Okay, so z is equal to 18. Or, don't forget, don't forget, it could be equal to 180 minus 18, which is 162. So, t, so Z can equal either 18 or 162. So now you gotta come over here, off to the side, and you gotta say, okay, I've got 71 and 18. Can I get a third angle in there? Yes, there's lots. 180 minus that, not a problem. How about 71 and 162? Can I get a third angle in there? No, so the answer is choice one. All right, looks like I'm doing pretty good. Be right. Oh my gosh, I was hoping I would be able to get to a logarithm question so I can sing to you. I know I like to sing. Anyway, let's get going. So we know when we have a log function, in order to change it, you need to change it into an exponential function, correct? All right, so it's all about that base, about that base. 
So we're going to do x raised to the y is equal to the log of 8. Well, now i got to solve for y. Oh, not the log of 8, just 8. Sorry. It's just 8. Once you turn it into an exponential, no more logs. So x to the y equals 8 because they'll switch. So now, if I tried to change it back into a logarithm, I would just go back here. So that's not going to be very productive. So what I want to do on, in this case is take the log of both sides. I'm just going to take the log of both sides. So if you take the log of the right side, you get log base, log of x to the y is equal to the log of 8. Well, where do we put exponents? Well, we put those out front. So this is really y times log of 8. Divide by log of x, divide by log of x, and I get y is equal to log 8 over log x. Choice 2. Yes, got another one right. An electron travels along a circular path with a radius of 4.6 miles. What is the number of miles the electron traveled during the interval for when the central angle formed by the path was 220 degrees? So we want, it's following a circular path, and this is your s equals theta our equation and you got to be careful with your 220 degrees we need to turn that into radians so we're going to do that in one foul swoop s equals 220 now i'm going to turn it into radians by multiplying by pi over 180 that's the conversion to radians now i'm just going to multiply by my radius which is 4.6 now it's definitely going to require some calculator use so 220 times control division pi over 180 times 4.6. And we get 17.66. So the answer is choice three. Anybody? 22 for 22? By the way, if you get 100, let me know. I'm so looking forward to it. Okay. So. Which statement about the function is true? Well, as soon as I see this, I'm like, you can't have negative 2 in the denominator. Its domain does not include 2. No, 2 is not a problem. That's not it. Its domain does not include 3. No, 3 is not a problem. So it has to be one of these two. has to be one of these two. It might be better to look at this thing graphically. Sometimes it's easier to look at this graphically. What is it? X minus 3 over X plus 2? Control division. X minus 3. Oops, forgot the X. Over X plus 2. So is there a range value this doesn't equal? Ah, oh, it looks like we have an asymptote right here at... I can't really tell. What number is that? What number can y not equal? I don't know. What can number not, y not equal? Looks like y can't equal 1. I would say y can't equal 1. Choice 3. Because that's uh, asymptote. Like if you graph the line, if you hit tab and you graph the line 1, you'd see, oh yeah, look, it looks like that that thing's graphing or getting closer, and you can grab this and closer and closer and closer to that one, but it's not crossing it, and that's a horizontal asymptote. So that would be the answer there. That was a tricky question. That was a tough one. How would you do on that one? That was a tough one. Which value of the correlation coefficient represents the strongest relation between two variables given the linear regression model? Now remember, strongest correlation is closest to 1 or closest to negative 1. So the answer is actually this one. Now, if you pick this one, they kind of tricked you. But the answer is choice one. Closest to one or negative one. The fourth term of this expansion. Oh, my gosh. So we're going to do five, choose zero. Five, choose one. Five, choose two. Five, choose three. This is the fourth term. That's the one I want. Now, if you did this in your calculator, this would be one this would be 5, this would be 10, this would be 10. Let me make sure I got this right. 5 choose 4 would be 5, and 5 choose 5 would be 1. So we want this one. So 
Uh, doesn't matter. I'm going to put it in the other way anyway. Let me put these parentheses in. This is the way I have always done it. I don't know how your teacher taught it to you. Hopefully, you've been watching some of my videos. Maybe they helped you a little bit. Uh, we're going to count five, four, three, two is the one we want. Zero, one, two, three. Don't forget the exponents have to add up to five because that's our exponent. In the first one goes the 2x, and the second one goes the negative 3. So I'm going to type in everything into my calculator that's calculatable. So menu, 5, 3. I'm going to do 5, comma, 3. That gives me my 10, actually, but it doesn't matter. It'll give me a 10. Times, parentheses. Now, I can't put the, the x in. I can only put the 2 in, squared, parentheses, negative 3 parenthesis cubed. So that gives me negative 1080. There you go. And then, of course, it's just x squared. Boom! Done. Choice 1. Two left. Two left. What are the center and radius of a circle whose equation is this? So you have to do completing the square on this. But this was kind of a tricky one because they don't have a y center. So I know the y part of the center is 0. Notice all of the y's are 0. OK, that's not a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to do x squared plus 4x plus squared. I have never done a problem like this. This is a good question. Plus y squared. I don't have to do completing the square on that. It's just there. Equals 5 plus squared. All right. So. Half the middle squared. So in here, I'm going to do x plus 2. Half the middle squared is 4, so i got to put a 4 over here. Plus y squared. So now is equal to 9. So I know my radius squared is equal to 9, so my radius has to equal, oops, not right, my radius has to equal 3. So it has to be one of these two. And here's my center. But remember. When it comes out, it comes out backwards. So although that's a positive 2, this is the right answer. It's negative 2, 0. All right, one last problem. Oh my gosh, so exciting. What is the product? Oh, OK. So eh, OK, I see what they're doing on this one. Since they're both cube roots, they can be multiplied together. So you, what you end up with is the cube root of 40 m cubed. Well, there's a perfect cube that goes into 40. So if you pick choice 1, Mm, sorry, kids. I know if you used your calculator, pick choice one, but that's not the right answer. The cube root of what perfect cube goes into 40? 8. 8 times 5. And then m cubed is a perfect cube. By the way, you probably picked 3 if you got this wrong. The cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of m cubed is m. So the answer is 2m cube roots of 5. Choice 4. All right, kids, that ends the multiple choice. Oh, my gosh, I hope you got a perfect score. All right, I'm going to get started on the rest of these.